Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, very good day today. I am pleased to introduce Professor O. Balakrishna who will be taking next 5 lectures. Professor Balakrishna joined the Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering IIT Khadapur as visiting professor in the year 2017. He is well known expert in the area of safety engineering, occupational safety and health apart from maintenance operations related to steel manufacturing. He worked for 36 years at various important top level positions in Tata Steel. After retirement from Tata Steel, he joined DuPont Sustainability Solution as independent consultant and then after that he joined our department and really we are, I am extremely happy to have Professor Obi Krishna with our department and he kindly agreed to take 5 lectures on very important topic. So, he will be teaching you occupational safety and health management systems 18001 then the entire is the what is that management system and then he will talk about the performance matrix or performance measures related to occupational safety and health management and uh, he will continue and if time permits he will also discuss something related to energy isolation. So, I welcome Professor Krishna. So, you please listen to him and I am sure that you will be really uh, benefited and any questions related to this particularly safety in industrial safety engineering, any practical issues you can put in the discussion forum and he will be happy to answer all those questions. And any other questions, what, what are the topics I have taught to you if there are any practical issues particularly or in general other issues you may also put in the discussion forum. So, definitely Professor Krishna and myself jointly will answer all those questions. So, once again I welcome Professor Krishna. Thank you Professor Krishna for joining. Thank you very much. Please listen to Professor Krishna. Uh, hello viewers. As uh, Professor Maiti introduced me, I will be taking a few topics with you. Before that, just I want to tell you, uh, I have the experience of uh, implementing, designing, implementing safety management systems in not less than 25, 26 industries across the world, including Tata Steel. So, this first lecture which I am taking is on the introduction to OSHAS 18001. You agree for any machine, processes, systems, equipment, the fundamental requirement is it should have, it should have three integrities. One is operation integrity, other is mechanical integrity, a third is human integrity. What is this operational integrity? 
what is this integrity at all? The definition of integrity is the things if they work as per your design, as per your requirement, it is called integrity. So, whatever is designed, it should work in that passion, that is called integrity. So, operation integrity means the operations of the equipment or processes behave the way I have designed, the way the designer has designed, that is called operational integrity. Let us take some examples of operational integrity. You heard of Bhopal disaster, which happened in 1984 in Tata in uh, India, which is one of the major disasters of the industries. It happened on uh, December 84, many people died, around 3000 people died, many people are uh, non-fatal injuries about more than 6 lakhs. We cannot forget it. Why this happened? What is the reason for this happening? The MIC gas has leaked. Why MIC gas has leaked? People say water has entered into the MIC chambers and there is violent reactions. Why water entered? Somewhere operational requirements have failed. The designer never wanted water to enter into that. Designer never wanted violent reactions happening in the chamber, but it happened because of various reasons. So, it has lost operational integrity, which no operations manager, nobody wants. Second is mechanical integrity. Have you heard of Piper Alpha? It is under British government. 1988, Piper Alpha is a oil platform. 1988, there was major disaster in the Piper, Piper Alpha platform and the whole platform vanished. Many people died, around 120 people died or more than that. In the platforms normally, oil platforms, families, families also reside, family members also died. It happened for small purpose. What, what happened actually in the Piper Alpha? There were two pumps, they have to pump out the liquid liquid uh, gasoline or liquid uh, petroleum products. One of the pump has got problem in the delivery lines where the pressure releasing valve is there. So, they wanted to change this, hence one line they want to shut down. It, it was taken for the shutdown and they have taken out this valve it is a gap and they have put the flange here and tighten. Pipe is electrically put off, the motor is electrically put off. And the next day in the night, the other pump was giving problem. So, they thought about the second pump, they never knew it was on shutdown and they started it. The moment they started, this flange, if it is tightened properly, the centrifugal pump would have keep on rotating, nothing would have happened. But the people have not tightened properly. They have tightened with loose looseness. As a result, the vapors came out from the flange and it caught fire and the whole platform went off. What do you call it? Mechanically, it was not tightened. The mechanical integrity, the people have not provided. Of course, there are operational integrity problems. The equipments, 
which you have designed, it should perform the way you want. Finally, operation integrity. People have to behave the way they are supposed to behave. People should have competencies competencies to run the machines, to run the processes, they have proper training and finally they have to implement it, they have to follow it. If they do not do it, we call it failure of human integrity. When the operational integrity, mechanical integrity, human integrity is ensured we say the integrity of the system is ensured. It is very easy to tell, but lot of problems in this. Let us look at, this is uh, in a steel industry, I am giving you an example. In a steel industry, integrated steel plant, say which runs with, which runs having capacity of 4 million tons, 5 million tons or 6 million tons, they produce 10,000, 20,000 tons per day. It is a blast furnace where iron is produced, that iron will go to steel melting shops for making it steel. So, iron will go to steel melting shops, this is steel melting shops, this is blast furnace iron. When this metal is made, it is, it is sent to steel melting shops with a car called Tarbato Ladel car, which will have say 300 to so 500 ton capacity at a temperature of say 1000 degrees centigrade. It is a refractory lined uh, Tarbato car. This to deliver properly hot metal to steel melting shops. The whole equipment should have mechanical integrity. The, the vessel should not fail, the drive wheel should not fail, the axle should not fail. If it fails, what will happen? With 300, 400 tons of hot metal with uh, at more than 100 degrees centigrade. And there is an operator who, who takes it operator has to take properly. If he, if he does, if he runs at very high speed, maybe at the junctions, at the curvatures, it may, it may get derailed, very difficult to derail. So, operation integrity, mechanical integrity, human integrity, operations means when What are the major operations in this? One is putting the putting the hot metal in the in the tarbato ladle. This is this is putting the hot metal in the turbo ladder. Second, transporting hot metal to steel melting shop. Third, unloading 
steel metal, unloading hot metal or iron which is very hot in the steel mill trough. So, we can look it, we can analyze what are the operation integrity in this, what, in, what is the operational integrity problems in this, you can do analysis, you can do mechanical integrity analysis, you can do human integrity analysis. If you, you have to ensure the integrity is there. If there is any gap, you have to see what is the consequence. So, if it is alarp level, as low as, as, low as practically pr possible, reasonably practicable, as low as reasonably practicable. If it is at low level, then you can leave it, otherwise you should have recommendations how to bring the integrity back. This is one of the example of uh, steel melting shop. <coughs> Why can't we achieve this integrity? Why? Because we do not know what is the hazard look at this, he is carrying two children to school, why to give prosperity to them, what is he doing, talking in mobile phone, not putting helmets, overloading, he does not know, he does not know the hazard, what is the consequence, if he, if he fall down, what is going to happen to him, to his children while talking mobile, if he hits anybody, what will happen? He is not able to understand the hazard, hazard is potential to harm, risk, the amount it can harm and the consequence. See here, why these things happen? When Every, every minute we have one serious incident happening in India, 16 people die on the roads every hour. So, even 21 children under the age of 14 die every day, still we do it. Why people do it? Why they are not able to understand the hazards? Where are the hazards coming from? Why are the hazards coming from? When are the hazards coming from? And how are the hazards coming from? If we understand this properly, properly people will not do it. People are not doing intentionally, people do innocently. That is the whole issue. These hazards are not created by others, we have created. As Einstein says, when we have designed the world, this world by us, we thought everybody will happen as we think, as we design, but it will not happen. If the hazard is more, if that opens out, the consequence is more. Look at this. This is the bullock cart. In the bullock cart, Hazard, it, it, rose, it goes at slow speed, there is no mechanical machines in this. Even anything happens in this, the risk will be very less. 
these also we have designed. We want speed. We want more speed. We want more comfort. So we have designed big roads. We have designed many, many cars running at very high speeds. These speed, the technology also brought associated hazards and risks in whole of its life cycle. That has to be understood. There are two types of risks. One is residual risk. What is residual risk? While designing the equipment, unknowingly, 90% of the time unknowingly, not able to see the hazard and the risk, people leave some hazard. That is the residual hazard which will be converted into risk. When it comes to operation, when you put the equipment in service, if any deterioration happens, then the entropic risk will come, entropic hazard will come. We will talk of these things little. So we said one is residual risk, other is entropic risk. What do you mean by residual risk? As a designer, you have to design processes, you have to bring technology, what technology you are bringing. Is it a two-wheeler with electric uh, power, two-wheeler with diesel power, two-wheeler with uh, petrol power or gas power. What technology you are using? Physical environment. How is the physical environment? Temperature, wind, the whole of physical environment around where you are working. In the industries, if you work, if it is a hot environment, then the design should be different. If it is cold environment, human resources. The designer has to think, what are the human resources required? What are the competencies, competencies required for running the equipments, for running the processes, for doing the maintenance? And that should be given. So while designing, on the drawing board, designers should see all these things are fulfilled. They should understand hazard in all these processes, technology, environment, and human resources. If this is not done, what will be the hazard? The total hazard of this and associated risk should be as low as reasonably practicable that we will call LARP. So this is as low as practicably possible. If you want to make it zero, it is not possible. It will cost more money. It will, it will cost sophisticated technology. Hence, within the tolerance we have to bring. But the designers normally do not have knowledge, that knowledge of hazards and the risks and they leave this much. This is called residual risk. Residual risk is coming from the design or coming from the manufacturing. You have to live with that. In a process, very hazardous process, if you put a risk of high, high level, managing it very, very, very difficult. The residual risk, let me give you an example. 
you must have seen tracks, railway tracks, about 70,000 kilometers tracks are there in India. Many places you will see roads crossing it. This is called unmanned crossings. Unmanned crossings. What will happen? The rule is trains will have first, first authority to go. By knowingly, unknowingly, many people, many people keep crossing, many buses keep crossing and trains will be hitting it. Why is it happening? You have introduced a residual risk. If you put a underpass or overpass, this residual risk will be zero. Without putting it, we are forcing people, we are forcing people to follow rules. That is called entropic risk. So, the moment you put a flyover, it will cost more money, it will cost more place. That's why flyovers are normally not built. It takes years and years, as seen in IIT Kharagpur near IIT, a flyover built, say after 65 years, in between so many people died. So that is called residual risk. What is entropic risk? When the systems degrade, when the processes degrade, when the technology degrade, when the environment degrade or when the human resources degrade, then the risk will be increasing and there are chances of becoming meeting with the accidents. When the risk increases very high, then people will get down, make hope. Oh, now the risk is very high, let me, let me bring it back. They keep on bringing down, going up, bringing down, going up. This is called entropic risks. Okay. So what we, what we talked, there are two types of risks. One is inherent or residual risk. I talked the example of uh, railway crossings. Then we talked about the entropic risk. Suppose a vehicle while going, the brakes fail, we call it entropic risk. Or the examples which I have shown, Piper Alpha, they are all entropic risk. So when the system degradation happens in all these three, all these fa four factors, the entropic risk come. So residual or entropic risk is the multiplication of the processes risk, the technology risk, or the environment risk, and the human risk. Multiplication of all these four is the entropic risk. So, if R, RR is the residual risk, RE is the entropic risk, the system risk, total system risk is RR plus RE because of these four factors is the addition of these two risks. So we have to see that these two risks are within the tolerable limit. So telling little more, there are 
processes, technology, physical and human. If the integrity loses, reduces, then the deterioration, the deterioration, when the deterioration keep happening, then the integrity will come down. Why deterioration, system deterioration happens? You all know, because of the maintenance problems, operation problems. So, when it goes to a alarming level, then you take action, it will come down. If you hold it, it is good, then it will go little up. So, you do corrective action here, this is the optimal level as the time goes, then the incidents will, will not happen, come down. Then what, what you have to do? You have to do Let us see how it moves. Initially, when the degradation happens, the incidence, the risk increases, the integrity reduces. You take action by proper maintenance, then you try to maintain it. Finally, if again degradation happens, it goes like this. Normally, you have to, when it comes here, you should hold it here and you should try to reduce the residual risk. That should be the risk management model for occupational health and safety management. We have to, if there is any, first you have to address the residual risk, then you have to address the, first you have to address the entropic risk then you have to address the residual risk and hold it at the alarm level. That is the purpose of the occupational health management system. Everybody would like to do this. These are some examples how the residual risk is introduced. If you put people working at height, you are introducing residual risk. If you reduce the height in the design, then the residual risk will be less. There are four systems for doing the effective risk management. One is implement maintenance practices to prevent entropic risk, so that degradation, degradation will not happen. When you maintain properly, when the entropic risk comes to the very low level, then you start working on the residual risk. If both residual and uh, entropic risk are normal, whenever you have to any degradation happens, if you keep working, then that is called effective risk management. Thank you. This is what, what did we discuss? We have discussed how the hazard will come, who are responsible, initially the designers because lack of competencies, lack of knowledges, lack of perceptions, then later entropic risk will, will come because of the operation people, operation degradation, maintenance degradation, 
human resources degradation people have retired you have not recruited the skilled people where the entropic risks are maintained example like tata steel after 100 years it looks new it looks young because entropic risks are managed very well the managing entropic risk human risk entropic risk and residual risk throughout the life cycle from design through it throughout that is called ohs management thank you